Good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you again this morning on a, what's a looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. Sun is shining, and um, I'm in my spot here. Um, got good coffee, and um, it's great to be able to open the Word of God with you. As you know, we um, well, I'm assuming that you know, but if maybe you're um, watching this without having been with us on Sunday, either in person or online, we were in chapter 12 of the book of Acts. Wonderful um, story of what happens when God's people pray. And of course, there was tragic elements of the story when James is killed early in the chapter, and then Peter is arrested, and God's people gather and pray, and the angel comes and delivers Peter and Herod, who was the one seeking to stop the church in its tracks by this persecution and gain favor with the Jews, was the one who had killed James and thrown Peter into prison. And he was, of course, perplexed. And the end of the chapter tells his demise where he went down to another city and began to speak and the people began to call him a god and, and the angel of the Lord struck him down. So <clears throat> lots of different things going on in that chapter but the thing that we we focused in on on Sunday morning was God being at work and when God's people pray we recognize that Sometimes God answers with no, sometimes with yes. He does it regardless of what's going on with the enemy. He does it even when our, our faith is a little bit low. And then we need to recognize that God's working is always according to His will, not ours. I want <clears throat> to zero in a little bit more on that one because I think... When we look at Jesus' modeled prayer in Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus said, And when you pray, do not heap up empty words as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. So God already has in mind what's going on. And Jesus said, I want you to pray like this. And by the way, that doesn't mean that this is the prayer you have to pray every time you, you pray to God. But this is just a good illustration, a good example of how we are to pray. Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then one of the other gospels adds, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Four little words that we talked about briefly on Sunday morning and really deserve a little bit more consideration. And that's those four words, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Now we know, because we have the beauty of hindsight, as we look back over that chapter, some 2,000 plus years have passed, we can see what God was doing and how He was working to continue to build His church and to, to let the gospel spread through those apostles. Um, I'm going to correct this on Sunday morning, but when Peter went to John Mark's house, I, I said that it was John and his mother mistakenly. And, but when Peter went to, to John Mark's house and the, the believers there were praying, they weren't sure that God was going to answer. And <clears throat> when they saw Peter, they recognized that God had other, had other plans. Now, always looking back, and that's why the little phrase, hindsight is 2020, um, we can see the things that, that God 
was doing at the time. But God wants us to trust Him. God wants us to be willing to say, Lord, you know better than I do. Your will be done. It's a very difficult prayer to pray, especially when the, the way ahead looks a little bit bleak. Um, you don't actually know what it's going to be like. And I'm a little bit in that situation right now, and I'm being tested to think and, and understand and trust and believe and have faith in what God promises us. And by the way, I'm not necessarily saying that God has to heal my cancer. I'm not saying that God has to do things the way I want them to be done. In fact, if you look at that chapter in Acts and you were the, the disciples, the apostles, you wouldn't have planned things that way. <laughs> in fact, we know that because even right up until the day, the early in Acts, right up until the day when Jesus ascended into heaven, the, the apostles were still asking for times and dates and what are you going to do and when, when is your kingdom going to come in? all of those things. So they had a very different agenda, or at least a very different plan for how that agenda was going to be um, worked out. And so it's one of the, the wonderful lessons that we can learn from narrative sections like, like Acts and uh, the Gospels, because it helps us to understand how much Jesus depended on his Father. And even when he was in the garden, and if, if we look at, you know, Matthew, further down in Matthew, verse 20, or chapter 26, when he was in the garden and he prayed, he, he said, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. I, I don't really want to go through this. Humanly speaking, Jesus didn't want to have to go through the pain and agony of the death of crucifixion. But I think even more than that, he didn't want to drink, drink the cup of God's wrath and pay for the sin of the world because it was a horrible, awful um, thing to have to do. No one had ever done it before. And Jesus was willingly taking on your sin and my sin, the sin of the entire world. And in that moment on the cross, he bore the wrath of God for us. No wonder, no wonder he said, let this cup pass from me. We all would have prayed that prayer, even more so. And yet, he ended those words with, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Jesus was committed to the will of his Father. We should be committed to the will of our Father. And there's a couple of reasons why I believe we can get to the place where we can pray that prayer. I'm not suggesting that it's easy. I'm not suggesting that I've got it down. Um, there are days when I'm struggling to pray that prayer. And yet I think the scripture helps us to identify how we can pray that, that prayer. Even in the Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. If we just unpack that, and, and we can take the rest of the morning to do that, but let's just briefly think about that. Our Father in heaven. The fact that God is our heavenly Father. In several places in the New Testament where the writers have used the analogy of a father. In fact, we, we read a passage just the other night 
from Hebrews where it talked about a father disciplining his son and, and how the father loves the son and, and, and will discipline him. And in the same way, God the Father will allow things to come into our lives to help discipline us, to, to bring some order and rightness into our lives. So that relationship that we have with our Heavenly Father is such an important component of being able to pray. Thy will be done. God, we trust you as our Father. We trust that you know best. And uh, hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. You are set apart from us. And, and there were other, two other words that help us with that as well. Our Father in heaven. So you're not God, a God who is here on this earth of wood or stone or clay, something that we worship that can pass away, that can disappoint us. You are a God in heaven with all power. Your name is, is holy. You are completely other than we are. You are not us. And that's why we can say, your will be done. It's amazing, isn't it, that we can trust God in the moments that are good, in the times that are easy, in the circumstances that don't challenge us. But when things get difficult, when things get hard, when Herod <laughs> captures one of the main apostles, boy, it's hard to say that will be done. When cancer comes, when a loved one dies, when, you know, you, we could go on and on and on. It's difficult at those times to say your will be done. There's another little phrase in the prayer that I think helps us, and it's right before the four words, your will be done. It's your kingdom come. God has a plan. He is building His kingdom. He is bringing heaven down to earth and changing everything. Jesus began a process when He was on this earth that has been expanding from the time that He left and, and this is the beauty of reading the book of Acts, that we can see the kingdom of God growing individual by individual, person by person who comes to faith, who joins the, the kingdom of God, who becomes one of God's children, who is a part of seeing his kingdom come. And of course, we know there's the now and the not yet of scripture. We know that more will come and there will be a greater understanding and realization of his kingdom one day when we are with him. But for now, it's important for us to recognize that God has a plan and we can trust his plan. We can trust his will. We can trust his wisdom. I want to read again for you the quote that I left us with on Sunday morning just briefly unpack it a little bit more. We it was talking about, and from Paul Tripp, wish list praying, which says, I know what is best for my life, and I'd appreciate it, God, if you would use your might to make it happen. <laughs> you pray like this when you forget that God, as creator and savior, knows infinitely more than you or I do about what you really need and what I really need. But even more than that, this kind of prayer makes life all about your wants, your needs, your feelings, and not God's plan, God's kingdom, God's will. We need to learn to submit to the greater and wiser purposes and plans of God. Powerful statement. Four little words. Thy will be done, or your will be done, God. 
Can you pray those words today? I'm certainly going to try to pray them and seek to live them in my life. I trust this week will be a week where you can see the will of God done in your life. Trust Him. He knows best. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your goodness and grace. Thank you for the privilege of being able to pray to you as our Father. And I pray, God, that your will will be done here on earth in the same way that it is done in heaven, in your presence. Guide and direct us through the rest of our week as we go through the challenges, the things, the difficulties that, that we come up in front of. We pray, God, that you will do what you do best and guide and keep us in your wisdom. Thank you for the Word of God and the way that it instructs us. Bless and guide us as we go through the rest of our week now. And we do pray your will be done. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. We'll see you again on Sunday morning as we continue in our journey in the book of Acts. And um, trust that you will have a wonderful day today and the rest of your week. God bless. See you soon.